three years ago, Shuya Nanahara and Noriko Nakagawa escaped the Wild Sevens Island. They became international criminals, and Shuya formed and led the anti-battle royale group named Wild Seven. To defeat them, the adults create a new game called the Millennium Anti-Terrorism Act, or Battle Royale 2. Refusing to forgive the adults who forced them to kill one another, the Wild Seven declares war upon them. Staring at her father's last painting of a girl surrounded by her classmates murdering each other, Shiori Kitano realizes the young girl is not her but Noriko Nakagawa. Her father was the school teacher murdered by his students three years ago, so she decides to join the upcoming game to confront her feelings about him. Shiori studies at Shikanatoride Middle School, which is deemed for losers and delinquents that don't have a bright future. Still, Shiori's plan is the only thing that feels real to her. On the school bus, the grade 9 Class B students sign a rugby ball to celebrate their graduation. Now Asakura tells Takuma Aoi, Taku for short, to sign it too, but he refuses. The class soon falls asleep during the long ride. At night, the students wake up finding metal collars on their necks. They panic as they look outside the windows, seeing cameramen, reporters, and military soldiers surrounding them. A reporter announces that Class B will be the participants of the revised Battle Royale. While soldiers quarrel the frightened students outside the bus, the reporter addresses the world, exciting the audience about the new battle. The students are forced to wear uniforms but they're taken and locked into a warehouse with other soldiers. The other students hold Taku back from angrily attacking the soldiers while the soldiers command them to sit. Class B's teacher, Riki Takeuchi, appears and claims that the students should know what's happening. Still, the students demand an explanation, so Riki writes a list of countries on the chalkboard while several students try to escape. The soldiers detain and point guns at them to force the students to sit. Riki finishes listing countries and explains that they're the countries America has bombed for the past 60 years. Suddenly, Taguchi launches a knife at Riki, barely hitting his ear. A soldier throws Taguchi down, allowing Riki to continue. Riki says those who killed many people last Christmas have secured themselves on an island. The students are taken aback when Riki grabs the knife from the board, pointing it at them. Riki adds that Shuya has taken responsibility for the terror act and has declared war on the adults. However, only one becomes an adult when they turn 20, and anyone younger than that is considered a child. Riki lunges at Taguchi, pointing the knife at his face before returning it to him. The teacher tells the students that Japan can't afford to raise kids like them anymore. Thus, the adults decline Shuya's war declaration. Riki announces that Class B will go to war and play Battle Royale 2. Soldiers then bring equipment bags for the students, and Riki announces the game's rules. The goal is to track down and kill Shuya Nanahara within 72 hours. The students are shown a line on the floor to divide them into winners on the right and losers on the left. He warns that the losers will die. Riki makes the students pick a side in pairs, starting with Nao and Taku. Instead of choosing, Taku tries to attack Riki, but Shiori pushes him to the winner's side. Curiously, the teacher asks Shiori if she'll participate, and she answers yes. Shiori then takes an equipment bag and moves to the winner's side. With that, Riki asks the pair again to choose. Enraged, Taku grabs a bag and yells at Riki that he'll never trust the adults before moving to the winning side. Seeing this, Nao decides to grab a bag and join him. The next pairs are called, and everyone chooses to participate until Shintaro Makimura and Kazumi Fukuda are called. Kazumi proceeds to the winner's side while Shintaro refuses to join since it's all crazy. Riki counts down to three before a soldier shoots Shintaro's leg, making him collapse. He refuses when asked again, so the soldier shoots him again, killing him. The students cry while Taku grabs the rugby ball from Shintaro's hands, mourning his friend. Suddenly, they hear Kazumi's collar beeping. Riki reveals that their collars are linked to their partner, and once their partner dies, their collar will explode. The students avoid Kazumi as she freaks out until her collar explodes, leaving only 40 students alive. Early the next day, the remaining students travel to the island. They're shown a map on their navigators, seeing three attack points around the enemy's hideout on the hill. The island is split into various zones, including a danger zone that changes every hour. They must leave the zone before it gets hot, or else they'll explode. As their boats approach the island, they get shot at by the Wild Seven. Several students are killed as the others panic. One boat gets shot and explodes. Those whose partners died from the bullets are also killed by their callers. Only 28 students reach the island alive, and they quickly take cover. Amidst the gunfire, one girl hurries back to the boat, hoping to escape. Her partner chases after her but gets shot, leading to the girl getting killed. Now, only 26 students are left. A helicopter drops ammo for the students to use. They quickly grab the boxes while still being shot at. After retrieving the ammo, they hide inside a small building. However, Shugo is shot, 
and the scholar starts beeping since his partner, Mickey, was left behind in the danger zone. The students yells for Mickey to leave the zone, hoping to save both her and Shugo. However, as the frightened Mickey runs back to them, she suddenly runs in the other direction and tries to escape. However, her collar beeps and explodes, killing her. Shugo gets away from the others to spare them from his collar's explosion. While taking cover, he says farewell to Taku, encouraging him to win. Shugo then rains bullets toward the hideout but he gets shot dead instead. Enraged at seeing his friend die, Taku starts shooting as well. At the headquarters, the soldiers monitor the progress, and Ricky announces the names of the dead students. On the island, the students find an abandoned house to rest in. As they do, Kuze gives herself an insulin shot, lamenting how she can't believe they wound up here. The others also realize how there are many things they could have experienced or learned, yet they're not fighting a war. Suddenly, they hear an explosion outside, so they gather in groups to see what happened. The first group is shocked to see Taguchi hanging on a rail of a building with both legs detached from his body. One tries to help him, but his classmate stops him as they find trip mines everywhere. The other group uses their radios, asking if everyone's okay. Hanami's collar starts beeping and everyone panics, barely avoiding the trip mines. The other group reports that they're on their way to help, but Shiori holds them at gunpoint, refusing to let anyone else die until they capture Shuya. Moments later, Hanami's collar explodes, killing her. Simultaneously, Taguchi's body falls from the rail, landing on the trip mines and detonating them. As they run away, the explosions kill six more students, leaving only 18 alive. Later, as the students approach the Wild Seven's hideout, the group begins shooting them. The students shoot back and Taku mistakenly hits Nozomi. One of the Wild Seven notices Taku's collar, catching Shuya's attention. The students shoot their way into the hideout. As they enter, they're confused to see a child running away. Ryu chases the child through the broken path surrounded by water while the others follow, but they got shot at, making them fall into the water. Lights suddenly flash open, and the Wild Seven appears above, ordering the students to disarm. Shiori attempts to shoot, but her gun is shot off by the Wild Seven sniper, Maki. Some students rise to the surface and surrender their weapons, while others refuse because they've lost family due to the Wild Seven's acts of terror. The Wild Seven claims they're not enemies, but one of the students shoots them, causing the group to fire back and kill six students. With only 12 students left, four students' collars start to beep, including Shiori's. Shiori manages to find the child and hold her hostage while she calls for Shuya. Shuya tells Maki to activate their EMB, so she goes to get it. Downstairs, Yuko's collar detonates, killing her. Feeling guilty for risking the child's life, Shiori lets her go, apologizing for using her as a hostage. She and the others with beeping collars then close their eyes and prepare for their deaths. Suddenly, Maki arrives and activates the EMB, disabling the collars and causing Ricky's headquarters to lose connection to all students. Because of this, Ricky orders the soldiers to depart for the island the following day. The students are then brought to a room filled with the Wild Seven and other war survivors. Here, they finally meet Shuya, and Maki drills off the students' collars. Taku asks Shuya about their motive, so he tells the story of escaping his country three years ago to a place that's been in war for 20 years. He describes how despite all the bombings, children still put smiles on their faces. Shuya asks the students what they're fighting for, as their suffering won't end even if they finish the game. He claims the Wild Seven won't stop fighting for the children and the ones they've lost, no matter how much it takes. Everyone is alarmed when one of the Wild Seven informs Shuya that soldiers are approaching the hideout. Shuya tells the students that the Wild Seven members are survivors of the game or those who lost their families in the war. Therefore, they aren't the enemies. As they prepare to defend their hideout, the Wild Seven takes the students to safety. Shiori refuses to leave as she's determined to talk to Shuya alone. Soon, the soldiers and the Wild Seven engage in a shootout while the students are taken away to hide. Shiori confronts Shuya, asking how murdering others and surviving alone feels. Before he can answer, soldiers storm into the room so Shuya rains bullets on them. He then turns back to Shiori who is aiming a gun at his face. Shuya swipes the gun and uses it to pin her against the wall, reminding her that if she aims a gun, she has to shoot because that's what it takes to survive. Taku sees one of the children shot dead and angrily shoots the soldiers alongside the Wild Seven. A soldier reports to the headquarters that the students have taken the Wild Seven's side and are now helping them. The soldiers are forced to request reinforcements from the headquarters as they get slaughtered. Soon, the last soldier backs away, pissed that a bunch of brats defeated his men. To his surprise, Taku is hiding in the shadows. The soldier attempts to attack him, but Taku showers him with bullets. With his last breath, the soldier reminds Taku that he also has a family. After the battle, the students gather around Nozami, who's still injured from Taku's gunshot. Seeing her suffer, Taku begs for forgiveness, 
but Nozomi just reminds them to survive before she passes away. Guilt-ridden, Taku goes to Shuya to ask what to do next. Shuya says they'll have to find out for themselves, so Taku starts beating him up out of frustration. Hearing the commotion, Nao and the others arrive. Taku points out that they've known that their lives and deaths were meant for nothing, even in this war. Enraged, Taku accuses the Wild Seven of being no better than the adults. Hearing this, Shuya shares that he wishes for the war to end. However, all they can do is remember the Fallen. Meanwhile, Shiori wanders around and finds a piano. As she plays a song, she remembers when her father invited her to celebrate her birthday outside. However, Shiori told him to go away because her birthday was yesterday. Before leaving the room, her father joked that maybe it was best for him to just kill himself. On the other hand, Taku recalls a memory when his mother sent him to Shikatonarida Middle School, hoping his temper would lessen if he were around kids like him. His mother promised to come back for him, but she never did. Now promises Taku that even when everyone comes and goes, she'll always be beside him. Elsewhere, Shuya looks at his old class picture, wondering if his fallen friends would think he's wrong to fight. He recalls a past battle when a comrade commented that killing others won't change their country. Still, he didn't know any other way to change things, so he gave Shuya his gun and told him not to look back. At the headquarters, Ricky looks at a picture of his daughter and mourns her death. He goes to the warehouse and angrily erases the written countries on the chalkboard. Sunrise comes and cameras are set up to film Shuya's message to the world. He stresses that no matter the lives lost and the tears shed, their group won't vanish even when the world calls them evil. Shuya points out that a handful of adults and nations are dictating what's supposed to be peace and freedom, but the world is far more complex than that. There are billions of people who have their own views. Peace amongst them can only be achieved by fighting for it. Shuya then calls all the children, encouraging them to fight to take back the freedom that was taken from them. Suddenly, a missile hits their hideout, causing the building to break down. Everyone evacuates as debris collapses, killing a few. At the headquarters, they try to find out who launched the missile when they receive a call from the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister reveals that the US President launched the missile and will attack their nation in 12 hours. To prevent this, he orders Ricky to decimate the whole island, believing that the children's lives are worth the sacrifice. This makes Ricky lash out, pointing out that the US belittled their nation before, yet they decide to just decimate any country they dislike. He then reveals his own collar as he realizes that the so-called adults have become more chaotic than the supposedly troublesome children. Seeing this, the Prime Minister orders his forces to end the Wild Seven before their country becomes a target, and Ricky walks out. At the hideout, Taku is trapped under debris with Kuze. Kuze is severely injured and confesses her feelings. Just then, the children find them, but Taku realizes that Kuze is dead. That night, everyone gathers at a funeral pyre outside the hideout. They watch the flames, grieving for the ones they lost. Knowing they'll be attacked soon, Shuya tells Taku about a mineshaft that might lead them to the mainland. He orders him to take the children and escape through there while the Wild Seven holds the battle. The next day, the Wild Seven prepare for battle while the children hide. One of the children, Jin, chooses to stay, so Shuya gives him his comrade's old rifle, assigning him to protect the other children instead. As Jin leaves, Shuya says farewell to the students. However, Shiori decides to stay, determined to finish the battle. Soon, the soldiers land on the island and hurry to the hideout. As they get near, the Wild Seven wait until they're in range before firing. Many soldiers fall at the attack while others continue to fight through. A few soldiers reach the base and capture and execute many of the members. One member throws explosives at the approaching soldiers, holding them off. Meanwhile, the students and children escape. But Taku realizes that they're turning back on something important. Choosing to fight for their freedom, Taku, Shibaki, and Osamu decide to help the Wild Seven. Outside, Shuya screams as his friends are slaughtered. Taku and his friends arrive, shooting the soldiers. Shibaki gets shot, and Osamu shoots a rocket launcher, killing himself and the enemies around him. With their sacrifices, Taku and the others meet Shuya right before the soldiers invade them. One of Shuya's men gets shot, so he tells Shuya to keep fighting before passing. This causes Shuya to lash out, raining fire at the soldiers. Maki shoots a rocket launcher at the soldiers, killing them and causing part of the building to explode. Shortly after, Maki and Saki stay to hold the enemies, urging Taku, Shiori, and Shuya to escape. As soon as they leave, Maki is shot dead. Taking cover, Saki activates a countdown before sacrificing herself to the soldiers. While the three escape, they run into Riki, who warns Shuya that all the students now want him dead. He reminds him to live with all the deaths he caused, including his daughter, who died during one of their attacks. As his collar beeps, he asks if life is only about winning and losing. Ricky tells them that they must live to find the answer, so he urges them to escape just as the countdown hits zero. 
Ricky's collar detonates and the bomb decimates the building and everyone within. The students and children in the mineshaft hear the explosion and continue running until they see a light. The surviving trio battle outside when more soldiers come their way. Shuya and Shiori get shot and take cover as Taku continues. As she bleeds out, Shiori asks Shuya what Noriko is like. This makes Shuya wonder who she is, so Shiori reveals that her father was the teacher in Shuya's battle royale whom he killed. Hearing this, Shuya tells her that Noriko always looks someone in the eye and smiles openly. This reminds Shiori of her father, thinking of him as she passes away. Just then, Taku retreats having lost his ammo. Shuya gives him their last weapons so the two continue fighting despite the odds. Eventually, missiles are launched onto the island, completely destroying it, thus ending the battle royale. The whereabouts of Taku, Shuya, and the students who survived remain unknown. Three months later, Taku and Shuya reunite with Nao and the others. Jin returns Shuya's weapon to him before Noriko steps out, welcoming Shuya home. While talking alone, Shuya laments that his efforts were still not enough. However, Noriko points out that the place they've found is still beautiful despite being at war for decades. This shows Shuya that there'll always be hope. Soon, Noriko, Shuya, and the children say farewell to Taku and the students before they go their separate ways, still hopeful of a brighter future. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.